In this video, I'd like to do a couple of examples where we use friction to solve some problems. Okay, so for the first one, suppose that we have a block that is on a surface and there's a tension force exerted on the block. Okay, And furthermore, let's say that we know some information about this. Let's say that we know that the mass of the block is equal to one kilogram. Uh, the acceleration of the block is equal to one meter per second squared. Suppose that we know the tension applied is going to be four newtons. Um, and what we want to do is we want to find mu. Um, and in particular, we have to decide, is it going to be mu s or mu k? Which one can we know? All right, so to begin with, um, let's answer the question about whether we're finding static friction or kinetic friction. Well, we know from what we're given that the block is accelerating. If the block is accelerating, that means it's sliding on the surface. And so we're going to be calculating a kinetic friction um, in this problem, OK? Um, next, what we want to do is draw a free body diagram. So this is going to be a diagram for the block. The forces on the block are, as usual, going to be the gravitational force on the block by the Earth, the normal force on the block by the surface, the tension force on the block by the rope, and a friction force on the block by the surface. Now, I've shown that the friction force is smaller. That's because we're expecting there to be an acceleration. So there must be a net force on the block if it's going to accelerate. OK, so um, what we want to do when we're solving a uh, um, a problem where we have forces and it's even moderately complex is we're going to want to consider Newton's second law in a couple of different directions. Okay, so if I draw this coordinate system where x is to the right and y is up, then I want to consider Newton's second law for the x direction and for the y direction. So let's do x first. So the net force in the x direction is going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Okay, so what forces do we have in the x direction? Well, I have tension on the block by the rope, that's to the right, and I have friction on the block by the surface, which is to the left. So I'm going to write that with a negative sign friction on the block by the surface. And those together are going to equal the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block, because the acceleration is, in fact, um, in the positive x direction. OK, now let's consider what's going on in the y direction. So the net force in the y direction is going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Well, it's not accelerating in the y direction. And so that tells me that the net force in the y direction is going to equal 0. OK, um, what forces are in the y direction? Well, in the positive y direction, we have normal force on the block by the surface. In the negative y direction, we have gravitational force on the block by the Earth. And as we discussed, those add up to 0. OK, well, um, I can rearrange this y equation to get that the normal force on the block by the surface is equal in magnitude to the gravitational force on the block by the Earth. And I know that's going to be equal to the mass of the block times g. So um, that gives us 1 kilogram times 10 meters per second squared. And again, I recommend using 10 instead of 9.8 for just sample problems. There's no reason to make things more difficult than they need to be, but use 9.8 if you really want to. Um, so then the normal force and gravitational force are both equal to 10 newtons. OK, um, then going back to the equation that we had for the x direction, we have the tension force on the block by the rope, which we know is 4 newtons. Um, we have the friction force on the block by the surface, which we don't know yet, um, is equal to the mass of the block times the acceleration of the block. OK, so let's plug in what we know. Tension was 4 newtons. We don't know friction yet. The mass of the block is 1 kilogram. And the acceleration of the block is 1 meter per second squared. OK, so um, 4 newtons minus the friction equals 1 newton. All right, and then if I rearrange that, what I'm going to get is that the friction on the block by the surface is equal to 3 newtons. OK, so now I know both the normal force and I know the friction. So I can use the coefficient of friction formula to figure out the relationship. So remember, the, co the, friction, um, the kinetic friction is equal to mu k times the normal force. Okay? And in both cases, we're considering the normal force on the block by the surface, so the um, on and by match. So 3 newtons equals mu k times 10 newtons. Okay? Um, and so mu k is equal to 0 0.3. Um, notice that the coefficient of kinetic friction has no units. Um, it's just a ratio between two forces. So um, if you're ever calculating a uh, coefficient of friction and you get something with units, you have made an error. OK, so that's one example. Let's do another. Let's say that you have a situation where you have a block that's on a ramp like this. And you crank up the angle of the ramp until the block just starts slipping. Okay, so block is not slipping, and you turn up the angle, turn up the angle, turn up the angle, and eventually it just barely starts slipping. So if we draw a free body diagram at that instant where it just starts slipping, well, we're going to have a gravitational force on the block by the Earth, a normal force on the block by the ramp, and a friction force on the block by the ramp. Okay. Um, 
And so what we want to do is pick a coordinate system where we can again compare x and y directions um, in order to solve this. I'm going to choose my x and y directions to be parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. That's often going to be a convenient choice, although not always. Um, so I want to break up all my forces so that they are in the x and y directions. The only one that isn't is g. So I'm going to take g. I'm going to redraw it. Um, I don't like to do this work on the free body diagram. Some people do, but I think it makes it far too messy. So I recommend always doing anything like this um, off to the side of your free body diagram. So GBE over here, um, and then it's going to have a Y component, which I'll just call GY, and it's going to have an X component, which I'll call GX, okay? Um, this angle, it turns out, is the same as theta. Um, I mentioned that before, but didn't show it. So what I'm going to do to indicate that is just on my diagram, I'm going to take a vector that's pointing straight downward from the block like so. Um, and if you look at this, what you can see is that um, I can draw a couple of 90 degree angles. So this is a 90 degree angle because I drew a vertical line. Um, and so that's going to be perpendicular to the horizontal. If I draw a perpendicular line over here like this, um, then this is going to be um, perpendicular to the ramp. And finally, I can draw like this and have another 90 degree angle here. Okay. So this green angle is going to be um, 90 minus theta because of the fact that we have this triangle that it has theta as one side, 90 as another side, and then the green angle um, there. So if the green is 90 minus theta, then that means that this blue angle has to be theta because those two add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so um, that's always going to be the case. Um, anytime you're looking at ramps, the angle of the ramp is going to be closely related to the angle of the components. Um, you just have to figure out which angle is which. Um, and with a little bit of practice, you can tell that pretty easily. Okay, so GY is just going to be GBE cosine theta. And GX is going to be GBE sine theta. Okay, so then doing Newton's second law in the y direction. Well, we have one force that's in the positive y direction, that's NBR. One force that's in the negative y direction, that's going to be GBE sine theta. Uh, sorry, cosine theta. And the block is not accelerating in that direction. It's not going into the ramp or jumping off of the ramp, so um, that's going to equal mass times acceleration in the y direction, which is zero. Okay, so rearranging that, I get that the normal force on the block by the ramp is GBE cosine theta, which is equal to mg cosine theta. All right, now let's consider the x direction. Well, I have one force that's in the positive x direction, that's friction on the block by the ramp. One force that's in the negative x direction, that's GBE sine theta. Those equal mass times acceleration in the x direction. And the block has just started slipping, so we um, assume that it has infinitesimal acceleration, so that's going to also be zero um, for that. Okay, so then rearranging this last expression, we get that FBR is equal to GBE sine theta, which is equal to MG sine theta. Okay, so now we have two equations. Let me write them together. So I'm going to write friction one first. So FBR is equal to MG sine theta and NBR is equal to mg cosine theta. Okay, so I can see that I have a lot of the same things in these two equations. What I'm going to do is a trick that's going to be really helpful a lot of times for um, manipulating equations. Um, I'm going to um, do the, the same thing to both sides. So um, in principle, when we do algebra, what we're usually saying is, okay, well, I can add the same thing to both sides of an equation, or I can divide the same thing by both sides of an equation. But keep in mind that what this equal sign tells us is that the thing on the left and the thing on the right are the same thing. So the friction is the same as mg sine theta. The normal force is the same as mg cosine theta. They look different, but I know those two things are the same size. So what that means is I can actually divide the thing on the left by the thing on the right. Because if, for instance, the friction is 6, that means mg sine theta is also 6. Um, the equal sign tells us those two things are actually the same. So I'm allowed to divide the same thing by the same thing and say that they're still equal. So then on the left-hand side, I have FBR over NBR. That's going to be equal to, well, the mg's will cancel, and I'll have sine theta over cosine theta. And remember, FBR divided by NBR is given by F um, equals mu times n. Right? So I'm dividing a friction by normal. Um, is it kinetic or static in this case? Well, the block isn't sliding, so we're looking at static friction. But we're looking at the case where it's just about to slide. So this is the maximum static friction. So this is going to be Fs max equals mu s times n. And so when I divide F by n, I'm going to get mu s equals sine theta over cosine theta, which you may remember is the same as tangent of theta. Okay, so in this case, we actually get a um, way to measure the static friction in a particular case um, by figuring out the angle at which something just starts to slide. We figure out what is that coefficient of static friction. And again, it's dimensionless because tangents don't have any units.